So Dad, it would be great if you could just tell me first of all when you came to the UK and where you came from. I came from Singapore in 1972, I believe it was June 72, um, and I was newly qualified, just finished my housemanship as a dentist. Great, and um, could you go into a bit of detail about your motivation for coming over to the UK? To be honest, I haven't travelled, I was 23 years old and I haven't travelled at all. I've just been up to Malaysia a couple of times when this is an opportunity for me to travel and there wasn't any dental jobs in Singapore for a new grad uh, without the financial backing to start your own practice. Yeah. And also I heard of quite a lot of my friends have come over and they had jobs and they were telling me that it's easy to find an NHS dental job. So that, that was my main motivation, travel and to work. Okay. And what was the process? Were you part of an initiative or any particular drive? Uh, there was a recruiting drive uh, from, from the NHS from overseas countries. So I'm not sure whether it's just Singapore or other countries, but uh, it, was quite a, it was quite a good deal that they offered. They almost guarantee you a job in the NHS. And on top of that, we are, we are given permanent residence with an indefinite leave to remain. That it was, there's no time limit, you can stay. So that, that was quite, even though I had no intention to stay yeah. indefinitely. But that was part of the Yeah, deal. that was part of it, yeah. Okay. So that was the deal that was offered. And how did you feel? Were you apprehensive about leaving home? Um, nervous in any way? Uh, like I said, I hardly left home, but I was quite excited. Yeah. And to be honest, my education was quite Western, so I'm going to a Western country and I knew that they speak English here, which yeah. I was educated in. So, and knowing that I'm going to just be here for three, four years, yeah. you know, it was, uh, I wasn't really nervous, more excited than nervous, I should say. But you didn't come on your own, did you? No, I came on my own that day, but before that I had a lot of my classmates who were already here for about six months, yeah. you know, so they okay. were going to pick me up from yeah. the airport and and they got accommodation and they even had jobs lined up for me. So, no, I wasn't nervous, no. And did you have any idea at the time, like what kind of time scale you're working towards? Did you think you were to have a set time scale in mind when you were going to come back to Singapore? I didn't have a set time scale, but I knew at that time I thought I was going to come over maybe three, maybe four years, work, get some money saved but also to go for some postgraduate qualification, okay. which will help me when I go back to Singapore to look for a job. Yeah. yeah. And how about your family back home? How did they feel toward you coming to the UK? I knew that my mother wasn't very keen. My dad recognized that I want to travel, so that was fine. Yeah. And also the reassurance almost, even though it didn't happen, yeah. that I will be back after three, four years I suppose that, that, that helped as well. Yeah, so that comforts them. Yes. What were your first impressions when arriving in the UK? Did they live up to whatever expectations you had? The first impression was the weather. Even though it was June, it was freezing, I remember. I don't think I had much clothes, well, I had a suit on, you know, which yeah. wasn't, but that was the first impression that it was very cold. Um, after that, we had a group of friends, so we actually mixed around with socially with my group of friends, so I didn't actually have to go out and meet people, apart from work, you know, when I work, okay. yes, I can't come in contact with the local uh, people, but apart from that, we were staying together, a group, a community of us, and most of us was on Singapore, and so, so the, my initial impression was that as a professional, I was very readily accepted, you know, but socially I didn't really mix too much with the local people, so I, I didn't get an impression then. It was only after some of them started a family, getting married, and then we find ourselves as single ones, you know, Yeah. Uh, th then we'd start mixing s socially with 
uh, other people, the neighbours and all that sort of thing. So you wouldn't say it was too much of a culture shock when you first like moving to London, obviously going out in London? No, I, like I said, to be honest, Singapore is quite westernised, you know. Okay, my background is a Chinese, ethnic Chinese, maybe have a little bit of culture, but my education and the system in Singapore was quite westernised, so yeah, it wasn't yeah. much of a culture sure. shock. When you were trying to integrate into English culture, we, did you meet any resistance, um, any any racism? Not really, to be honest. Again, I don't know whether because I was professional, but yeah. when I started mixing socially, I would say that I'm generally accepted quite easily. So I I, I wouldn't find I, I I can count on one hand the incidents that I thought were racist, but you know it, that was after. 30, 40 years being here, mm -hmm. so I wouldn't say that even initially there weren't very obvious racist incidents. Yeah. Uh, were there any aspects of English culture you found easy to adapt to or hard, difficult? Was there anything that you kind of latched onto when you first came here? It was easy. Um, I suppose initially um, my accent and understanding the local accent, yeah. that was a little bit difficult. Yeah. But apart from that, no, I don't think I have much problem, you know, in, in adapting to the local culture. No. Okay. Are there any values from home which you feel like you've held on to over all these years? Yes, I think the most, the main one, I suppose, is family. I'm yeah. still very close with my family back home. And I still communicate with them a lot, and I try and go back every three, four, well, two, three years yeah. to keep in contact. And they, they come over to visit me as well. So that that's the main one, the family part. But otherwise, I would say that Western culture, you know, it is quite common in Singapore as yeah. well. So we know more a lot about that. So it wasn't much of a shock as far as that's concerned. Yeah. And were there any moments in those first few years when you felt any homesickness or? any need to desire to return home? No, not in those first three years, definitely no. Yeah. I mean, like I said, because I thought that I was always going to go yeah. back, it didn't really matter that much, you know? Okay. But apart from missing people, the main yeah. thing I miss also, of course, is the food. <laughs> Getting used to, to the local food. Actually, the, over time, you know, yeah. even but that is not that, that crucial. I guessing at the time you didn't, you couldn't really get authentic Chinese foods. We we used to go down to uh, Soho quite a lot, where where the yeah. Chinatown is, mm -hmm. and we could get a lot of Chinese food there. But then yeah. you got to travel in, you know, yeah. okay. because. It is. Um, well, obviously you're still here. Uh, what would you say during that journey has led you to staying here right now? Well, I met a girl who's still my wife, uh, that for 45 years on, uh, two years after I got here, and we got married in 1976, okay? And because a lot of the family were over here, I couldn't exactly just transport yeah. both of us back home to Singapore and, and make her leave her family. So that's why I ended up staying here and starting a family in this country. Okay. I bet you still go. You still went back to visit quite a bit. Uh, Initially, uh, when I was working, I used to go back every two, three years. Yeah. But since I retired, you know, in the last ten years, I've been going back every year. You know, mainly to see friends and family. Yeah. So tell me, do you have a favourite moment or episode or um, time when you worked in the NHS? Not a specific. Uh, moment of time, but I did enjoy treating patients. I enjoy yeah. having the rapport with patients and communicating with them to the extent that uh, I've got some patients who have been with me for about 20 30 years and I've seen them, I've seen their children growing yeah. up as well. Yeah. And that, that is what I really enjoyed. But uh, work is work, but I also enjoy my work because of uh, my rapport with the patient. And that, that is what I really enjoyed and that's what I really miss when I retire. Okay, that yeah. part of it. Yeah. Okay, great. Thanks for that. Um, have you got anything more you'd like to add uh, before we close this interview? Yes, I would say that I'm glad I came. 
I'm mm-hmm. glad I've settled down here and I'm happy for you know doing what I'm doing now. And I was happy all throughout my time while I was working in the NHS as well. And you know that that's what I find quite gratifying. Yeah. You know my work and even in my retirement now, you know, I find that staying in this country had, had, had contributed a lot to all that. And there yeah. were never any thoughts of retiring to Singapore? No, because I feel like the few times, well, I do go back every year, but every time I go back, I feel more of a foreigner in Singapore than I would say I'm a foreigner in this country, even despite the fact that, you know, ethnically I'm Chinese. So that, that, that's my final sort of uh, reflection on my whole journey, I suppose, that I've settled here and I'm happily settled here and this is my eventual home. Okay, thanks so much, Dad, for all that and your recollections. Yep, most welcome. So how long did you work for the NHS in total? I worked in the NHS from the 1972 until I retired in 19, uh, no, no, 2009. So that gives it about 30 years, is it? Almost 30 years, I think, 28, 27, 28 years. And I assume it changed quite a bit during that time. It has changed quite a lot. You mean, initially there wasn't much. You, you just treat patients and you've got to fill in records but now there's a lot of paperwork and a lot of administrative work that goes into it and if you don't you didn't start off with that there's a lot to change you know as you go along so that that, that was my main problem yeah. doing the administrative stuff and the paperwork but now these the dentists that come out of the university they know that they've got to do all that and sure. they start with all that so it, it's not a problem but adapting to that was a problem for me. So I retired in um, 19, no, 2000 and I, I was 60 years old when I retired. I worked for, I didn't retire completely. I worked for three years part time and then I retired completely maybe about 10 years ago. Great. How long did it take before you felt England was tr- felt, truly felt like home? It depends on how you define home, actually. I mean, Singapore is my home where I yeah. grew up in, okay? But then England is my home where I got married, start a family, and put down roots. So it's, it's home. Both of them are home, but a different perspective, you know, mm-hmm. from a different perspective. One is my birth home, and one is my, my base as such, you know, Singapore. And what would you say... I mean, hopefully it will be obvious, but what would you say you most missed about about Singapore? Yeah, like I said before, the main thing is the food. I, a lot of people can't understand why I don't miss the weather, but actually now when I go back home to Singapore, I find the weather too hot, okay? I've got yeah. used to the temperate the weather now. Yeah, so it's not the weather. I miss the food and the fa- family and yeah. friends, I suppose. That's the main thing that I miss, yeah. That is them. Would you say you were proud of your journey? I don't think proud is the right word. I'm just saying that I'm glad I did the yeah. journey, you know. And um, yes, I would say that I'm glad I did it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and I've settled in well, and that that's where I am now, you know. Okay. And um, tell me about what you're doing now. Okay. Um, I became a Christian about 25 years ago and so since I retired I've been very active in my church and also active in church affiliated activities not necessarily just yeah. mainly church but outside church and that has been taken up a lot of my time at the moment and it's good gratifying work and you know enjoyable as well. Yeah. Great and uh, how would you describe your legacy here? Um, I have met a lot of people who have stayed good friends. Yeah. I've got a family here now, you know, children, grandchildren, you know, 
and even my in-laws, you know, that, that they have a good, we got a good ring of friends and family that I think is what I, I enjoy being with a lot of the yeah. time. Um, I don't know if legacy again is the right word. When you say legacy, you almost look back and think, what, what have I left? <laughs> and well, I, I would well, think that... It's a politician. Yeah. So, uh, j apart from the fact that, you know, if I made an impression on anybody, whether it's friends or families, then that's, that's the legacy that I would li li like to say that I've left behind. And that's all that I can say that, you know, I've enjoyed. Um, have I regrets? Not really. Um, could I have done things better? Yes. But regrets not.